Well, now for the news in detail, the local news first. The Mahin the Chintan extended version is also the policy statement for the general election. The desire of the government is to form a strong administration. These references were made by Minister Maitri Pala Sirisena at a media conference today. He opined that the Freedom Alliance is presently at its strongest position in the country's political history. He noted that the UNP and the JVP have deteriorated due to poor political decisions. They are at their weakest positions in history. At the general election, UPFA is hopeful of increasing the nearly 60% of votes received at the presidential election. The minister said that a strong parliament is needed to implement the policy statement. As such, he requested the masses to help them in achieving their goal. The JVP has fallen into the most pathetic situation in its history. This has obviously become evident by the party using a different symbol this time. The minister added that it was the leaders of the JVP and the UNP who destroyed the future of the parties. The Attorney General's department is to file legal action on behalf of Belgium against an aide of Sarat Fonseca. He is wanted in that country over an illegal money transfer case. According to CID sources, Belgium authorities are likely to visit Sri Lanka soon to file action through the Attorney General's department to recover the money. It has been illegally transferred to a local branch of an international bank in Sri Lanka by Seneca de Silva, a coordinating secretary of Sarat Fonseca, who is now in custody. The coordinating secretary had been sentenced in absentia and imprisoned for two years in Belgium for illegal money transfers. CID sources said he is said to have carried out the transfer using the Internet. Seneca de Silva was arrested together with, uh, with General Fonseca over conspiring to assassinate President Mahindra Rajapaksha and his family, as well as several other allegations. Seneca de Silva was a captain of the SDF and had retired from service several years ago. The Colombo Fort Magistrate has granted the Sri Lanka Army permission to record a statement from Wellington de Hoyt who is a director of the High Corp Limited. The statement is to be recorded for the investigations that are underway on Sarath Fonseca. The magistrate gave consent to record the statement under the detention laws. This follows a request made by the Army. High Corp Limited is allegedly owned by Fonseca's son-in-law, Danuna Tilakaratna, who is still absconding after a warrant was issued for his arrest. Meanwhile, the Colombo Fort Magistrate and additional district judge, Ms. Lanka Jaratna, rejected bail today to Wellington Dihuet, the High Corp Director, who had been remanded in connection with an alleged arms deal. The judge ordered to further remand the suspect since the case required investigations both in Sri Lanka and the U.S., Granting bail would hinder the investigations. Dihuet was arrested by the Criminal Investigations Division on January 7, 2010 for his alleged involvement in defrauding the government by presenting forged documents to the Sri Lanka Army while the company was supplying equipment. Meanwhile, the Criminal Investigations Department has recorded a statement from former cricketer Hashan Tilakaratna over Danuna Tilakaratna. The police searched the house of Hashan Tilakaratna to find out whether Danuna Tilakaratna was hiding there. However, police spokesman SP Prashant Jayakudi said that Danuna had not been at the premises. As such, the CID sleuths recorded a statement from Hashan Tilakaratna before leaving the location. The government has expressed its disgust over the contradictory comments made by the former Chief Justice. The former Chief Justice at a function at the Democratic National Alliance in Colombo had said that fundamental rights petitions should be heard and concluded within two months. However, he reminisced that there are instances 
when he too were unable to do that. Allegations were made that the hearing of fundamental rights petitions of Sarat Fonseca in the Supreme Court that he should be released had been adjourned until the end of the polls. Moderate critics point out that this statement amount to belittling the legal network. They expressed concern over such statements made by a person such as Sarat and Silva, who had held the highest position of the judicial network. In the meantime, addressing a news briefing at the Information Department today, Minister Lakshman Yababe Vardhan noted that the government is deeply concerned over the statements made by former Chief Justice in connection with Sarat Fonseca's incident. The minister emphasized that comments made by him as a person who was at the court over a case in process is not appropriate. You're watching Prime News and still on the local segment, China leads foreign lenders to Sri Lanka. China became the top donor to commit aid to Sri Lanka in 2009, lining up more than half the total of 1.2 billion US dollars, though Japan was still slightly ahead in actual disbursements. A pre-election fiscal report issued by the Finance Ministry this week, ahead of parliamentary polls in April, said foreign governments and lending agencies had committed 2,221.7 million US dollars to Sri Lanka in 2009, which topped the previous high of 2,069 million US dollars in 2008. The Asian Development Bank was a distant second to China's with 423.7 million US dollars and the World Bank third with 241.8 million US dollars. South Korea had committed 76.3 million US dollars. Japan, Sri Lanka's top donor, had only committed 19 million US dollars. Western nations and Japan had taken a back seat in lending to Sri Lanka after relations became strained over the last stages of a war with Tamil Tigers in early 2009. Committed funds are disbursed over two to five years. Sri Lanka was now sitting on 6.4 billion US dollars of committed aid. It has been a year since the attack on the Sri Lankan cricket team in which a dozen gunmen attacked the team bus with rifles, grenades and pistols, wounding six players, a British coach and a Pakistani umpire and killing seven policemen. Since the attack, two assailants have been arrested. One was shot and killed while one of the facilitators was identified and is in prison and four others are still at large. One of the arrested confessed to the police that they had planned to take the cricket team hostage but their plan changed in the wake of the situation after the attack. The attackers ambushed the Sri Lankan team's convoy on Liberty Roundabout on March 3rd, 2009 and fired AK-47s and rockets and hurled grenades at the team's bus. Besides affecting cricket, the attack resulted in the cancellation of a lot of sports activities. Criminal Record Office Superintendent of Police Faisal Goza was the only official who reached the hotel and escorted the Sri Lankan cricket team from his own jurisdiction. He said the impact of that attack was going to last very long as the country's image has been maligned by it. He told the Pakistani Daily Times that it is not possible to uncover all the terrorist links in such a limited time. He said information gathering about the remaining men and their links would take some time. He added that the security agencies were working round the clock to capture the remaining assailants. Orphans International Worldwide has honored Sri Lanka's permanent representative to the United Nations, Dr. Pali Thakona, with a Global Citizenship Award during a VIP reception held at the Webster Hall in New York. The award recognizes individuals who best personify the global citizenship through their leadership in helping humanity. There were also some other awardees. Orphans International Worldwide was founded by Jim Luce in 1999 
and is associated with the United Nations. Sri Lanka Tourism takes its campaign to the New York City. The Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau took their worldwide Destination Sri Lanka and Visit Sri Lanka 2011 campaigns to the New York Times 2010 travel show. It was held last at the Jacob K. Javits Convention Center. Sri Lanka's permanent representative to the United Nations, Dr. Pali Takuhuna, inaugurated the event. Dilan Aryavansa, Honorary Director for Sri Lanka Tourism in the USA, said this was a fine opportunity for them to showcase the multitude of tourist attractions Sri Lanka has to offer. In addition, the New York Times has put Sri Lanka as the number one place to go this year. Despite having everything, 